Today, we're gonna be breaking down the five best moments of the Elward Generation Q season three and the worst five moments. This is in the first half of the season, so episodes one through five. And also included in this list is some things that generally wouldn't be included in lists like this. For example, cast members leaving. So we're gonna go over all of that, but make sure you're subscribed and leave your top five moments and your worst five moments in the comments down below. So let's get right into it. So I'm gonna start out with the worst five moments and then do the five best so we end, you know, on a good note. And this is just my opinion. As I said, leave yours below. This isn't fact or anything. This is just my own preferences. So coming in at number five for the worst moment of season three, is episode four, just episode four in general, because this was the first episode that we were going to get a holiday in the L Word Generation Q or the L Word in general, and it just was not a fun L Word Halloween. <gasps> Roxy! Hi! Happy Halloween, bitch! You're gonna end up in jail. Mom, they still have you to bail them out. We didn't even get a lot of the characters going anywhere or doing anything. We got it set up in the beginning, like Roxy and Danny were gonna have fun and then nothing happened. Alice didn't even leave her house. People were dressed in the worst costumes. And the only thing I really liked about this episode was the return of Max. So I was really disappointed. I wanted a great Halloween episode and this episode needed to come out strong because it was the first episode without Gigi and it already lost Bet and Tina the week before. So moving into the fourth worst moment, no surprises here, that would be episode five. I mean, episode four was bad, but episode five was even worse. The only thing I liked about this episode was the last scene with Alice and Shane and everything else, it was just a boring episode. It was not fun, not exciting, no groups. It just really, it didn't hit me at all. And I kept actually checking like how much longer was left of the episode. And that is so not me. Like I clearly love the L word and this episode just, it didn't hit it for me. So moving into the third worst moment, this is kind of a lot of moments added together, but it is just kind of the lighting, music, deleted scenes, situation that we've had in a lot of these episodes. Most of the on-screen kisses have been terrible. They haven't been lit. You haven't been able to see anyone's face. And as Jennifer Beals said in the 2017 Entertainment Weekly L Word reunion, there's something wrong with the way I kiss. And I was like, what do I do to fix this? Because you are a great on-camera yes, kisser. Yes, yes, yes. What? Why? Jennifer? Yeah, yeah. What, what do you do? What do you do? I commit. You commit, but you also you know that you're making a visual picture. You're creating a picture on screen. You need to be aware of that. And the whole thing about the L word, which I'm always saying, is this show lives and dies by social media. It's driven by social media. And for someone who has an L word channel to not be able to get one frame of a kiss for a thumbnail or something, that just drives people insane because there's so many people who have YouTube channels or Instagram accounts or even just share on Twitter or amongst their friends. And to not have one frame that you can use from like kisses or people even on screen together. It's just such poor decision making because that's literally free marketing for your show. Do you know how many people come into my comments on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and they're like, who are these people? Who's Bettina? Who's this? Because they see a picture and they're like, oh, I hot milfs. Like I wanna know more about these hot milfs. So you're just really screwing yourself over here. As I've been saying, I'm hoping the noise we've been making about this will cause them to reevaluate things with the last few episodes. And as I mentioned in my live stream yesterday, which you can go rewatch if you haven't seen it, I did say that they are still in post and they will be in post until basically the end of January when the finale comes out. They are doing things right down to the wire. So hopefully they heard us loud and clear. Please 
lights on, hair out of the face. We can do it, guys. We just need one frame, please. So moving into number two, I mean, actually, number two and number one are just going to be even, and I'm going to explain why. Number one, joint reasons are Jennifer Beals and Laurel Holloman leaving the show or reducing their role, whatever you want to say. Reducing their role and then leaving is probably the most accurate. And then Seppi leaving the show after episode three. The reason that I haven't placed one above the other is because Jennifer Beals and Laurel Holloman are very much like the heart of the show. Jennifer Beals has carried this show on her fucking back for 20 years and she is the beating heart of the show. Like everybody talks about this, even if you don't like Bet or you don't like Bet and Tina or whatever it is, you you can't say that she hasn't done an awesome job. Like even some people love to hate Bet, whatever it is. But Jennifer Beals has done a lot for this show, for the community, and Bet Porter is the lesbian revered around the world. But when it comes to Sappy leaving the show, I honestly believe it's of equal impact because Bet and Tina, while they are very popular and while they are getting their happy ending and tying everything up. Yes, there's things that they could do, but for the most part, like them walking off into the sunset, that's a good ending. I think people would be happy with that. Like they're kind of trading. Okay, we're getting Bet and Tina back together and they're getting married and, you know, that's letting them leave the show. But with Seppi and with Danny and Gigi and Gigi, Gigi is by far the most popular member from Generation Q. And as I've said a lot, when it comes to people who actually watch Generation Q, Danny and Gigi are the most popular couple. Whether it be that people who are watching Generation Q just have latched more onto Gigi, whether it's because they're new and fresh, whether it's because they haven't been around long enough to piss people off or to have people hate them, whatever it is, people who watch Generation Q, Danny and Gigi are the most popular and they could have been the future of the show. They could have done all the stuff that happened with Bet and Tina, the will they, won't they, ups and downs, you know, going through their relationship and and they've just like fucked it all basically. So I think those things are of absolute equal impact because losing those three actors is the worst thing to ever happen in the L Word universe, point blank period. So moving into better times, I'm gonna talk about my top five favorite moments from the season and they're biased as hell. What, you know, what else am I gonna say? Of course they are. Like this is my opinion. So they're gonna be a lot filled with the same type of people. I really wish there was some great Danny and Gigi moments to put in here, but they have given us fucking nothing this season. So unfortunately, it's really Bet and Tina heavy. So coming in at number five is the scenes in episode two where Bet, Alice, Shane, Tess, and Angie are in the car. There's some really great moments in these scenes when they're all in the car screaming, Tina! Tina! Ah! Tina! Feel the ground beneath you. Ah! like from you know season two and then also the moment where bet is telling alice that she's her favorite ex-girlfriend except for tina incredibly fucking special like unicorn rainbow special and apart from tina you are my absolute favorite ex-girlfriend you're gonna make me cry I love these moments. It gave me OG L word vibes and it definitely was one of my favorite moments this season. Moving into number four is when Bet and Tina reenacted the little gallery scene in episode two again. There's gonna be pretty much just episode one and two here. And I, I love this. As I said, when I first watched the trailer, I saw one second and I just knew that's what they were gonna do. I think it was super cute, super adorable and just a really nice way to call it back to the original show. As I've said, the finale of season three is called Looking Ahead, and I do think that's in reference to the episode where they first have the meeting gallery scene because that episode is called Looking Back. So number three, this moment is one of my favorite, favorite moments from this season. And that is the OG scene in episode two, Los Angeles traffic. They're not letting us in on anything. Do you know if they're coming together? All I know, Tina texted and said she wanted to meet up. So she's not using the group chat. God, I love the drama though, I do. The scene where they go to Dana's and it's Alice, Shane, Bet and Tina, truly, as Alice said, it is as if no time has passed. 
better? Oh, now look at this. I can't believe it. This is cute. Oh, holding hands. <laughs> is this really happening? It's happening. We have a lot to figure out. Yeah. I love this scene. It was everything and I just wish that we, well I hope that we get more of this in episodes 9 and 10. Please, 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 please. So coming in at number two is the Ben and Tina moment from the premiere last year where we finally, 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 after like 12 fucking years, we get Ben and Tina back together. And then the next moment where Angie walks in. You gotta be fucking kidding me. What the f I have seen that scene and moment probably 50 times, maybe even more. All the rewatches and the scenes and when I'm putting clips in and I still laugh. It was a brilliant moment and also just the whole Ben and Tina thing. Obviously, I'm a sucker for that stuff. So that was definitely my second best moment. Only beat out by the moment in episode two, Los Angeles traffic. There's so many other great moments in this season, but I have to give it to this moment. And it's of course, Bet Porter running through fucking traffic. to Tina's car and Bet's whole confession, love confession, and then them jumping in the car, literally like attacking each other. Get in, just get in. I loved everything about this moment. It was so real, so great the acting, just everything about it was absolutely brilliant. Cheesy as hell. As I said, I'm a sucker for that stuff. Couldn't care less. I loved it. It will live on as one of my favorite moments in the L Word history. So I would love to know all your moments, the worst and the best, down below in the comments. Make sure you're subscribed because I'm really trying to get to 20,000 subscribers. And honestly, that would make 2022 for me. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, make sure to stay safe, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.